The pharmaceutical industry in India ranks third in the world terms of volume and 14th in terms of value. According to Department of Pharmaceuticals, Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers, the total turnover of India's pharmaceuticals industry between 2008 and September 2009 was $21.04 billion. Hyderabad, Mumbai, Bangalore and Ahmedabad are the major pharmaceutical hubs of India. The domestic market was worth $13.8 billion in 2013. The government started to encourage the growth of drug manufacturing by Indian companies in the early 1960s, and with the Patents Act in 1970. However, economic liberalisation in 90s by the former Prime Minister P. V. Narasimha Rao and the then Finance Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, enabled the industry to become what it is today. This patent act removed composition patents from food and drugs, and though it kept process patents, these were shortened to a period of five to seven years. The lack of patent protection made the Indian market undesirable to the multinational companies that had dominated the market. Whilst the multinationals streamed out, Indian companies carved a niche in both the Indian and world markets with their expertise in reverse engineering new processes for manufacturing drugs at low costs. Although some of the larger companies have taken baby steps towards drug innovation, the industry as a whole has been following this business model until the present. India's biopharmaceutical industry clocked a 17% growth with revenues of 137 billion rupees, 3 billion dollars in the 2009-10 financial year over the previous fiscal. Biopharma was the biggest contributor generating 60% of the industry's growth at 8829 crore rupees followed by bioservices at 2639 crore rupees and bioagri at 1936 crore rupees Topic overview topic in 2002 over 20000 registered drug manufacturers in India sold 9 billion dollars worth of formulations and bulk drugs 85% of these formulations were sold in India while over 60% of the bulk drugs were exported, mostly to the United States and Russia. Most of the players in the market are small to medium enterprises, 250 of the largest companies control 70% of the Indian market. Thanks to the 1970 Patent Act, multinationals represent only 35% of the market, down from 70% 30 years ago. Most pharma companies operating in India, even the multinationals, employ Indians almost exclusively from the lowest ranks to high level management. Homegrown pharmaceuticals, like many other businesses in India, are often a mix of public and private enterprise. In terms of the global market, India currently holds a modest 1 2 percent share, but it has been growing at approximately 10 percent per year. India gained its foothold on the global scene with its innovatively engineered generic drugs and active pharmaceutical ingredients (API), and it is now seeking to become a major player in outsourced clinical research as well as contract manufacturing and research. Indian companies received 304 abbreviated new drug application ANDA approvals from the US Food and Drug Administration USFDA in 2017. The country accounts for around 30% by volume and about 10% value in the $70-80 billion US generics market. Growth in other fields notwithstanding, generics are still a large part of the picture. India is the largest provider of generic drugs globally. Indian pharmaceutical sector industry supplies over 50% of global demand for various vaccines, 40% of generic demand in the US and 25% of all medicine in UK. Topic quality topic The quality of drugs and APIs active pharmaceutical ingredients made by Indian pharmaceutical companies is very good. In the past three years 2015-2017, there were 31 FDA warning letters to Indian pharmaceutical companies citing serious data integrity issues, including data deletion, manipulation or fabrication of test results, see an analysis of 2017 FDA warning letters on data integrity by Barbara Unger, Unger Consulting Inc. 1. Topic exports Topic Exports of pharmaceuticals products from India increased from $6.23 billion in 2006-07 to 8 $8.7 billion in 2008-09 a combined annual growth rate of 21.25%. Some of the major pharmaceutical firms include Sun Pharmaceutical, Cadilla Healthcare and Puramal Enterprises. India exported $11.7 billion worth of pharmaceuticals in 2014. Pharmaceutical export from India stood at $17.27 billion in 2017-18, and is expected to grow by 30% to reach $20 billion by the year 2020. 
The ten countries below imported 56.5% of that total. Topic patents Topic A significant change in intellectual property protection in India was the 1st of January 2005 enactment of an amendment to India's patent law that reinstated product patents for the first time since 1972. The legislation took effect on the deadline set by the WTO's Trade Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights TRIPS agreement, which mandated patent protection on both products and processes for a period of 20 years. Under this new law, India will be forced to recognize not only new patents but also any patents filed after 1 January 1995. In December 2005, the TRIPS Pact was amended to incorporate specific safeguards to ensure that the public health concerns of affordability and accessibility for a large section of people in developing countries was not compromised. These amendments came into force only in January 2017, however, after two-thirds of the member countries ratified them. In the domestic market, this new patent legislation has resulted in fairly clear segmentation. The multinationals narrowed their focus onto high-end patents who make up only 12% of the market, taking advantage of their newly bestowed patent protection. Meanwhile, Indian firms have chosen to take their existing product portfolios and target semi-urban and rural populations. Topic product development Topic Indian companies are also starting to adapt their product development processes to the new environment. For years, firms have made their ways into the global market by researching generic competitors to patented drugs and following up with litigation to challenge the patent. This approach remains untouched by the new patent regime and looks to increase in the future. However, those that can afford it have set their sights on an even higher goal, new molecule discovery. Although the initial investment is huge, companies are lured by the promise of hefty profit margins and thus a legitimate competitor in the global industry. Local firms have slowly been investing more money into their R&D programs or have formed alliances to tap into these opportunities. Topic small and medium enterprise topic As promising as the future is for a whole, the outlook for small and medium enterprises SME is not as bright. The excise structure changed so that companies now have to pay a 16% tax on the maximum retail price MRP of their products, as opposed to on the X factory price. Consequently, larger companies cut back on outsourcing and what business is left shifted to companies with facilities in the four tax-free states, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Uttarakhand, and Jharkhand. Consequently, a large number of pharmaceutical manufacturers shifted their plant to these states, as it became almost impossible to continue operating in non-tax-free zones. But in a matter of a couple of years the excise duty was revised on two occasions, first it was reduced to 8% and then to 4%. As a result, the benefits of shifting to a tax-free zone was negated. This resulted in, factories in the tax-free zones, to start up third-party manufacturing. Under this these factories produced goods under the brand names of other parties on job work basis. As SMEs wrestled with the tax structure, they were also scrambling to meet the 1st of July deadline for compliance with the revised Schedule M Good Manufacturing Practices GMP. While this should be beneficial to consumers and the industry at large, SMEs have been finding it difficult to find the funds to upgrade their manufacturing plants, resulting in the closure of many facilities. Others invested the money to bring their facilities to compliance, but these operations were located in non-tax-free states, making it difficult to compete in the wake of the new excise tax. SWA's Medicare is one of the small-scale leading pharmaceutical company of India, which is owned and founded by a physician. Topic. Largest companies Topic. Topic. Sales, marketing, and business Topic. Multinational pharmaceutical companies ranked as per active presence of sales, marketing and business in India Topic. Publicly traded pharmaceuticals Topic. Topic. Biotech. Topic. Topic. Relation between pharma and biotech. Topic. Unlike in other countries, the difference between biotechnology and pharmaceuticals remains fairly defined in India, with biotech a much smaller part of the economy. 
India accounted for 2% of the $41 billion global biotech market and in 2003 was ranked third in the Asia-Pacific region and 13th in the world in number of biotech. In 2004–05, the Indian biotech industry saw its revenues grow 37% to $1.1 billion. The Indian biotech market is dominated by biopharmaceuticals, 76% of 2004–05 revenues came from biopharmaceuticals, which saw 30% growth last year. Of the revenues from biopharmaceuticals, vaccines led the way, comprising 47% of sales. Biologics and large molecule drugs tend to be more expensive than small molecule drugs, and India hopes to sweep the market in biogenerics and contract manufacturing as drugs go off patent and Indian companies upgrade their manufacturing capabilities. Most companies in the biotech sector are extremely small, with only two firms breaking $100 million in revenues. At last count there were 265 firms registered in India, over 92% of which were incorporated in the last five years. The newness of the companies explains the industry's high consolidation in both physical and financial terms. Almost 30% of all biotech are in or around Bangalore, and the top 10 companies capture 47% of the market. The top five companies were homegrown. Indian firms account for 72% of the biopharma sector and 52% of the industry as a whole. 4. 46. The Association of Biotechnology Led Enterprises ABLE, is aiming to grow the industry to $5 billion in revenues generated by 1 million employees by 2009, and data from the Confederation of Indian Industry CII, seem to suggest that it is possible. Comparison with the United States The Indian biotech sector parallels that of the U.S. in many ways. Both are filled with small startups while the majority of the market is controlled by a few powerful companies. Both are dependent upon government grants and venture capitalists for funding because neither will be commercially viable for years. Pharmaceutical companies in both countries see growth potential in biotechnology and have either invested in existing startups or ventured into the field themselves. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Government support. Topic: The Indian government established the Department of Biotechnology in 1986 under the Ministry of Science and Technology. Since then, there have been a number of dispensations offered by both the central government and various states to encourage the growth of the industry. India's science minister launched a program that provides tax incentives and grants for biotech startups and firms seeking to expand and establishes the Biotechnology Parks Society of India to support 10 biotech parks by 2010. Previously limited to rodents, animal testing was expanded to include large animals as part of the minister's initiative. States have started to vie with one another for biotech business, and they are offering such goodies as exemption from VAT and other fees, financial assistance with patents and subsidies on everything ranging from investment to land to utilities. The biotechnology sector faces some major challenges in its quest for growth. Chief among them is a lack of funding, particularly for firms that are just starting out. The most likely sources of funds are government grants and venture capital, which is a relatively young industry in India. Government grants are difficult to secure, and due to the expensive and uncertain nature of biotech research, venture capitalists are reluctant to invest in firms that have not yet developed a commercially viable product. The government has addressed the problem of educated but unqualified candidates in its draft National Biotech Development Strategy. This plan included a proposal to create a national task force that will work with the biotech industry to revise the curriculum for undergraduate and graduate study in life sciences and biotechnology. The government's strategy also stated intentions to increase the number of PhD fellowships awarded by the Department of Biotechnology to 200 per year. These human resources will be further leveraged with a bio -adieu grid that will knit together the resources of the academic and scientific industrial communities, much as they are in the U.S. <laughs> Foreign investment an initiative passed earlier this year allowed 100% foreign direct investment in the biotech sector without compulsory licensing from the government. See also 
Topic: Pharmaceutical marketing. Pharmaceutical industry. National pharmaceuticals policy. Opium and alkaloid works. Contract research organization. Genome Valley Pharmaceutical industry in Bangladesh Topic. References Topic.